My name is Maeve. I got married to Remy when I was 21, whom I had been dating since high school. Remy and I started dating in high school, and I fell in love with him, the popular guy who was good at sports. We both graduated from high school and started working right away. It was during our third year as working adults when he proposed to me with a bouquet of roses, saying, I love you, Maeve. I'll make you happy for the rest of your life. Will you marry me? I was so surprised and happy that I couldn't find the words and just cried. After I calmed down, I managed to say, yes, I will. Thank you. From then on, everything went smoothly and our wedding plans progressed quickly. We decided to get married on the day between our birthdays and it was a busy time for us. Amidst all of that, Remy told me that his mother wanted to meet me. So we decided to visit Remy's parents on my day off. I was nervous, but happy that they wanted to see me. When we arrived, Remy rang the doorbell and someone from inside the house called out, Hello! The door opened, revealing an elegant and defined woman. Remy introduced me. Mom, this is Maeve, the person I told you about. I introduced myself and bowed slightly. Remy's mother smiled and said, Oh my, what a lovely girl. You must be tired. Please come in. At that moment, I felt incredibly relieved. I had been worried about what kind of person Remy's mother might be, and if she would be difficult to deal with. However, she was much kinder and gentler than I had imagined. I thought to myself that if she continued to be like this, I could probably get along with her, even if she became my mother-in-law. We were led into the living room and had a casual conversation. She asked me, Do you have any hobbies or interests? I replied, I like to go traveling. I do too. Traveling is great, isn't it? She continued. As we chatted happily, Remy suddenly stood up and said, I'll be right back, gonna use the bathroom. Okay, see you soon, I replied as he left the room. Then, my mother-in-law spoke in a completely different tone and asked, Maeve, can I talk to you for a moment? I was startled by her change in attitude and asked, What is it? She glared at me as she spoke. Can you do household chores? I nervously answered, If it's something basic, then yes. My mother-in-law let out a big sigh and said, It's unfortunate that Remy chose to marry someone like you. I was taken aback by her sudden remark. She thinks it's pitiful for Remy to marry me? Why would she say that? I didn't know how to respond and just stood there in shock. Just moments ago, I had been relieved that she would become my mother-in-law and everything would be fine. But now, that hope was shattered so easily. Looking at me standing there dumbfounded, she said, So, can you two just break up? No, even if you ask me suddenly like that, I replied, feeling frustrated. Remy returned at that moment and asked, what were you guys talking about? I didn't know what to say, so I stayed silent. She quickly covered by saying, We were just talking about cooking or something. She then added, You know, Remy, if you ever get married, Maeve and I will have to support this household from now on. Right, Maeve? My mother-in-law smiled at me. Her expression was friendly, but her eyes didn't match. I couldn't express my fear well, so I just gave a false smile. There were more family gatherings after that but I couldn't truly enjoy them and ended up just giving forced smiles throughout. When the topic of living together came up as our wedding approached, I asked Remy, I'm sorry, but can we live together, just the two of us at first? But Remy was full of enthusiasm saying, my mom and dad are looking forward to it too. Plus, didn't you say you wanted your own home already? We need to save up, he concluded. I couldn't say anything in response to Remy's eagerness. It was true that we needed to save up for our future home and life, and there was nothing wrong with living in his parents' house, where we didn't have to pay rent. Although I wasn't thrilled about it, I decided to do as Remy suggested. However, as expected, the atmosphere became tense whenever we were alone together after getting married and living with his parents. Why can't you do anything right? You are so incompetent. How did you even think you could get married to him like this? My mother-in-law resented. She would say these things to me, dumping housework on me and complaining about everything. Day after day, I was bombarded with criticism and sarcasm, and my patience had reached its limit. However, a year after our marriage, Remy's job was relocated, and as a result, we had to move away from Remy's hometown. Our new location was farther away, so we only saw his parents during Thanksgiving or Christmas vacation. 
We spent our second New Year's Eve together after having a leisurely first year. However, the following year, Remy suggested we visit his parents' house for New Year's Eve, though I wasn't very enthusiastic about it. I thought it was only fair since we didn't have to see them every day anymore. Unfortunately, the day after we arrived, Remy left to drink with his local friends, leaving me alone with my mother-in-law. My father-in-law had also accompanied Remy and would return late. I had hoped to spend a relaxing time, but instead, my mother-in-law immediately began telling me to clean all the rooms as a big cleanup. What? All of them? I asked, genuinely surprised. Don't question what I've said, just do it without a word, she retorted with an irritated tone. Although I felt uncomfortable, I didn't want to cause any more trouble during the holiday season, so I reluctantly complied. While I was cleaning, she kept watching me, saying things like, There's still dust there. Didn't I teach you how to wipe properly when you lived here before? And to top it off, she started belittling me, saying, Oh, it's such a shame that Remy has to live with such an incompetent wife like you. Of course, though her comments upset me, I kept quiet and did as she asked. Because of incidents like this, I told my husband that I get tired when I visit my in-laws, so I don't want to go there as much as possible. But my husband said, You should come back home properly on New Year's Eve. Mom is really looking forward to seeing us, you know. He blamed me as if it was my fault. Yes, my mother-in-law never bullied me when Remy was around, and even acted too kind toward me. So... I couldn't tell Remy that I was being bullied by her and could only keep quiet. Even after that, it was once a year, on New Year's Eve, that we had to go to my in-law's house. At that time, I convinced myself to enjoy it, saying it was only once a year. But actually going to my in-law's house was nothing but painful. I intended to retort if my mother-in-law said anything on the way to their house. But when I actually faced her, tears welled up for some reason, and I couldn't say what I wanted to say even when she made sarcastic remarks. However, even I have my limits. Before spending my fifth New Year's Eve with them, I decided to confide in Remy. I know this may sound sudden, but I don't want to go back to my parents' house after all. I don't want to see my mother-in-law, I said. Is it because she makes snide remarks? Remy asked me calmly. Huh? Did you know? I widened my eyes in surprise. Well, I've seen some signs, he said as he fiddled with his smartphone. If you knew, why didn't you help me? It's been really tough for me all these years since we started living together. I spilled tearfully, but he didn't even glance at me. On the contrary, he heaved a sigh as if annoyed and said, Hey Maeve, you're alive, so just try a little harder. My mother is just watching out for you because you're not doing well, isn't she? He concluded. At that moment, I felt something inside me crumble. He knew I was being bullied by my mother-in-law, but he did nothing. He knew and ignored it thinking that my mother-in-law was right. Everything seemed stupid, and I gave up. In the end, I didn't have the energy to retort to Remy, and I decided to go back to my in-law's house that year too. When I arrived at my in-law's house, my mother-in-law started belittling me, just like always. I told you last year, and yet you still haven't done it, she stated to me assertively. I wondered if Remy had told her about my complaints regarding her bullying, as she began to make sneaky comments directly to me, even though Remy was pleasant. To make matters worse, Remy joined in, laughing whenever his mother scolded me, saying things like, Can you do anything right when you're at your husband's family's house? But even when we were living together, Remy never lifted a finger to help with the housework, leaving everything up to me. All my pent-up frustration began to grow with each snide comment from my mother-in-law and every laugh from my husband. Before I realized it, I had taken off my apron and was looking directly at my mother-in-law. I'm leaving, I declared. But my mother-in-law retorted, What are you talking about? You're living without doing anything as a wife? Are you crazy? Do you want me to do everything for you? I responded, Yes, please. Or better yet, if you have something to say, why don't you do it yourself? Do whatever you want. I'm leaving. With that, I packed my bags and left. I didn't need to put up with any more discomfort. There was no need for me to stay in this house any longer. Even though I could hear my mother-in-law and husband's angry shouts as I left, I ignored them all and went home. As I rode the train back, I kept repeating to myself, this is the right thing to do. When I finally arrived home, I didn't read any of the many messages that my husband and mother-in-law had sent me. A few days later, my husband came home and said, let's get a divorce. 
What, divorce? I asked. You talked back to my mother, didn't you? She's had enough of you, he said. And besides, I have a girlfriend now. She's younger and cuter than you. My mother even suggested that I should be with her instead, he continued. That's cheating, isn't it? I said. Sure it is, but you made me do it. You and my mother both have been a pain in my neck, he said. I felt like nothing mattered anymore. Maybe my husband would repent and apologize for everything. Maybe he would change, but it was all in vain. Okay, I understand, I said, and packed my things to leave the house. I decided to go back to my parents' house. With no clear destination in mind, I walked from the nearest station to their home in the snow, and my parents, who came out to greet me, looked surprised. What happened? My mother asked me, and before I could say a word, tears overflowed from my eyes. Everything I had been enduring on my own all this time seemed to flow out with my tears. I cried out loud like never before, and my parents kept patting my back throughout. After wiping my tears and telling them everything, my mother shed tears while my father turned red-faced and fuming. You did a great job, he said, patting my head, and the tears that I thought had receded welled up again. There was also the matter of inheritance, so my father introduced me to a lawyer he knew. As a result, my husband's family's finances were in shambles. After learning everything, my father-in-law also decided to divorce my mother-in-law and kicked her out of the house. Since my husband's affair partner was a junior at the same company, it was found out, and he was demoted. Now, my mother-in-law is said to be living in the apartment where my husband is staying. He has called me multiple times, but I have ignored his calls and hung up. And then, one day, my husband and my mother-in-law came to visit my parents' house. In response, my mother asked, What brings you here? With a firm tone. My husband and mother-in-law immediately fell to their knees at the entrance of the house, and my ex-husband said, Oh baby, I'm truly sorry. Please forgive me. My ex-mother-in-law added, Maeve! I'm sorry for everything. It was my fault. Please come back and forgive me. They started saying such foolish things. I thought it was ridiculous and ignored them, but my ex-husband said, I've also properly broken up with her. Please come back to me. I was infuriated by his words and retorted, What are you even saying now? You're disgusting. Looking down at my ex-husband, who was kneeling before me with tears in his eyes, I asked, Can you please just leave since you are bothering me? He slumped in despair and didn't move from where he was. Please forgive him, his mother pleaded. Mom, can you call the police? I asked my mother. Sure, she replied and took out her smartphone. Despite this, my mother-in-law wouldn't give up. After a while, the police arrived and took the two away. They were deemed to have committed a nuisance, and a restraining order was issued against them from approaching my parents' home. Later, I heard that my ex-husband was transferred to a different job, where he was being used and living with his mother in misery. Knowing about his miserable situation, I felt good. After being a victim for so long, I decided to take it easy from now on.